Grown Black Folks Talk, The Art of Professional Party Crashing, Part 3. Now, shout out to subscriber Bia, who, after I described how I managed to score a trillion dollars worth of information from a $1,200 conference that I do not have actually have access to, after I had found this out, she wanted to know, okay, I would like to be able to not to be able to crash $1,200 events without a press pass. So how do I do this? And I wrote her a very long comment about how to do this. I had to go review my, review my notes for a moment. But then I thought, this might be a good video. So shout out to subscriber Via for thank you for the idea. Thank you for the question. And thereby we're able to benefit everybody. Now, why am I dressed like this? Yes, I could have put my dress back on and my hat back on and my necklace back on, all the rest of it if I had want to. But I didn't because I wanted you to know it starts here. Research, find an event that interests you and then do research so you can be fluidly conversational so you're conversational about the topic that you're interested in. You need to be able to keep up a conversation. You need to be fluidly conversational for another reason. Acquiring that kind of skill will also allow you to be a good fly on the wall. The biggest piece of information I got was not somebody talking to me. They were on the phone and were talking to somebody else, and I was just fly on the wall. But because I understand the topic, it was a summit about crypto, and because I'm familiar enough with the language, this is how I got clue one that allowed me to find out all those other things later. So make sure it's an event you want to go to. Make sure you understand the topic, because otherwise you're not going to be able to do much. Let me tell you something. As I said in part two, if you are a Black woman, people assume a couple things about you when you arrive at a $1,200 event. And we'll talk about how you overcome this a little bit later. But generally speaking, people are going to assume that you don't know anything about what's being discussed. So if you do get a chance to talk to someone, they're going to be, you want them to be pleasantly surprised that you know and to not assume that you don't know and that you shouldn't know about it. So make sure you're ready. Use the time in your home on your free time to do your research and get prepared. Second of all, all these things, and of course, we're talking about business conferences, not really so much a party, but a business conference. So make sure that you know. Now, these things take different forms. Now, there's different ways to crash a business conference. I am a daytime crasher because I don't really live the nightlife. That's never been part of who I am. By the time night hits, I'm generally at home creating something for the next day. Um, I'm also someone who doesn't drink or smoke or have sex outside of marriage. So a lot of the standard night activities. Can I get my quotes to show up on the screen? Nope, it's not going to happen today. Fine. A lot of the standard night activities, I never was part of that scene. I'm a daytime, but you get gig in. You can also do be just as boring as, in your life as I am and sit up in the lounge and drink Shirley Temples and Roy Rogers and other virgin mojitos and other things. And also, if you're more of a night person, you also can meet all these people after hours. Costuming is different, but we'll come to that a little bit later. Just understand, I'm not talking about going to some fly party in the city because I'm not really a partier. I'm talking about a business conference, which is a professional's idea of going and picking up a lot of information. I call it party crash, professional party crashing, because that's still kind of the idea. You don't, you didn't pay the twelve hundred for the invite, but you're still there somehow, and that goes on to number two. Number two. So you found this event. Is it a public event center? or hotel. Now, public is extremely important. Forget this at private event centers where you're going to have to get past ticketing and security to get in. Like the Moscone Center is like right across the street from the Marriott Marquis, but I wouldn't have been able to crash a event there without a press pass or without at least doing a whole lot of daring do that I don't risk myself doing because I'm still Black in America. What you want to do is focus on events that are held in public venues that the public has a right to go in and out of anyway. Hot many big hotels are conference centers also, because what you want to do is scout it out and find out where the public areas are. But first, make sure the event's in a public place. Imposter syndrome is something that is partially imposed on us from the outside, which is to say people are always going to question why you are around certain information because the point of the country to have a permanent underclass is to make sure Black women and Black men also don't get this information. But as a United States citizen, you have a right to be anywhere the public can be. As an immigrant with legal rights to be here, you have the right to be anywhere the public can be. If you do not have documentation, 
presuming that no one's going to be checking you for it, you're still a member of the public, even without documentation. So if all those things are true as an American Black woman, if it's, you best believe I will be there. And that's the mindset you have to go in. So then, public, then what you do before the event is go scope out. Where now in my state, you can, uh, in my in my city, I can't say anything about the whole state, but in my city, you can't smoke indoors, period. But if you're in a state that's a little bit different, find out where people are going to take their smoke breaks, their coffee breaks, their phone breaks, and where they're going to go get something to eat. And this is where you meet people that you can have conversations with. Because the private areas for the conference that you can't get in because of t their ticketed will be Adjoin to the public areas in the hotel, the event center, where people are going to go get. Now, this particular conference did take part of the hotel for lunch. They cordoned off the area, but people still need to get some more distance to go make phone calls, maybe go check email, and so forth, when it wasn't an environment that was loud. And that's where I was situated. <laughs> so I did my, I knew this hotel well. So I knew where people were going to go. And that's where you want to situate yourself because you have a right to be there as a member of the public. Okay, let me check my notes again and make sure I don't forget anything. Okay, number three, please find out what the culture of your city is. Research the culture of the hotel and research the culture of your city. Because that really makes a difference in terms of there's two ways you can look at your attire. And with this, also research the dress code of the conference itself. These two things go together. But in San Francisco, there's a particular culture. Uh, people come here and do their work, but they also know that afterwards, whenever they're finished, they're gonna go and enjoy the city. This is what my pastor calls the city of recreation. So people tend to have casual business conferences here. And sure enough, the ACAMS conference was business casual. Folks walking in in their backpacks. And I'm sitting there thinking, I put on my hat and everything to come here. But then I was opting for something different. Because you have two choices. You can either blend in, you can be another business person on the spot who just happens to be another business person. You know, you, you could even take the tag of some conference you went to before because conference goers at the hotel don't necessarily know what other conferences are happening at the hotel. However, there is, when you deal with financial conferences and people in law enforcement, they, they had folks out here from the FBI and Homeland Security. Remember that they're talking about a trillion dollars worth of stuff. So that's the other reason why having to get involved in daring do and being where you're not supposed to be is sometimes not a good idea. Big businesses, big government has what called trade secrets. So you don't want to do anything to suggest that you may be a corporate or government spy when you have matters this big. This is why you have to know where the public areas are. You can also, like I said, choose to blend in. But another way to make this happen is lean into your femininity. What I did was showed up with my computer and dressed as I was with my bag, my hat, my dress. And basically the impression I was gonna give is, yeah, I'm a black woman. Y'all don't think I need to be here. I'm here working just like you are on the internet, but I'm dressed because I'm going to go get my work done and be out of here during the daylight. In other words, I'm higher class than you. Even though we're both working, my class is a little bit higher than yours, even though I'm a black woman it confuses people and it dislodges from them the idea that automatically you don't know anything. No, that woman is dressed to kill. She's getting her work done and she's going to go do whatever it is we came here to do, but we don't get to leave till five. She'll be sipping her early temple earlier than that because she's dressed like she's going to leave earlier. You can also choose not to blend in. And if you are a beautiful woman, this is always going to be an option. It's easier to do this if you're a woman than a man. It's easier to do this as a black woman than a black man. If I were a man, I probably would have opted for business casual and probably a little bit less casual than the people who were there and just blend it in. Sometimes that's the easier thing to do. But because I am a woman, I had the option of choosing to present as ultra feminine and definitely no threat. So someone that they didn't need to worry about trying to in uh, trying to worry about is she a corporate spy clearly not dressed like that but also someone who 
looks competent enough to still be there. Because like I said, the impression I'm giving since I bought my computer and was doing my work there is, yeah, I'm in a tech industry just like you are. I'm just better positioned and probably make more money and can get off sooner than you and can actually come to work like this. And I can go off and do whatever I'm going to do before you can. It also just blesses people because again, people want to tell you the big, beautiful black woman does not exist. I was treated like a queen all day long by everybody I encountered. And that's the other thing that this provides you as a woman. If you present yourself like a queen, you'll be treated as such and spoken to as such, and you will be allowed to get information that other people simply will not by virtue of that. So in a nutshell, that's the art of professional party crash, but it begins when you dress like this at home. Just understand this is where it starts. Get your information together so you know what you're talking about. Figure out how you're going to look like you belong there. Business cash, you know, know what the dress code is of the hotel, but also look at um, of the, the conference, but also know what the city is like. Because like I said, I can pull off dress really well to do work because I'm going to go off and get on the red and white fleet and go see San Francisco Bay later this afternoon. I can pull that off here because that's the expectation. People come to work and then to play. I still got to go back and sit down with Antonio and have that Shirley Temple I was talking about when I next came back to town, quote unquote, downtown. I live here. I still got to go get cute and go back to that hotel and get my Shirley Temple in the lounge. Because like I said, you can be pure and still participate in at least the early evening part of the nightlife here. And see who there is to meet just to be meeting it. So then we go from business kinds of crashing to actually, you know, whatever events may be held there in the evenings. Now, I will say this. I'm a, more of a day person in terms of my out, outward activities. So I literally would be going to the lounge and just watch the sunset, basically. That would be something I would do to relax. But another thing that you can do if you're more comfortable with the nightlife is get dressed up and go to the lounges afterwards because people that stay at the hotel, what are they going to do? They're going to go to the bars and the lounges that are at the hotel a lot of them are. They're not going to go to other places. They don't know the city as well. So they're going to tend to stay close by if that hotel knows what they're doing. And sometimes you can go bump into people like that and, you know, just talk about, you know, I'm in the town for blah, blah, blah. And you and just let them talk. Now, the ACAM professionals, you have to wait till they get a couple of drinks in them before you go get quite a bit of information out of them. These are people that are very sensitive to financial crime and they know the games that are played. But if you show that you're like, I, the way I would have handled this is I'm a crypto investor. So I would have asked a question about, you know, from a KYC, know your customer, anti-money laundering uh, perspective. Are there any cryptos that the retail investor, you know, if in the name of not supporting criminality, are there any real stinkers or are there any ones that y'all love in terms of their transparency, in terms of what you're trying to do? That's how I would ask that question. But there's certain things people like that can't tell you. So you have to do enough research, even on the night side, when people are more relaxed, to not trigger their instincts. There are plenty, once you've done your research, you can find legitimate questions to ask, but it still starts when you like this. Beauty and cunning. A well-fit suit and cleverness for the gentleman only goes so far. You still have to be prepared. So when you are like this, a week, I had about a week to get ready. A week, two weeks, three weeks, five weeks in advance. This is where the work really starts. If you're going to be crashing business conferences and not paying that price, you've got to be equipped in a way that a professional in the field does not. They have a right to sit there and absorb all day. You may have one or two chances to pull information out that may be worth your while. So step one is really important. Find an event, research it, make sure you're prepared. Understand who's going to be at the conference and why they're going to be at the conference and what they're going to be talking about. And get up on enough of it so that you can talk about it competently should you get the opportunity or and or overhear something and have enough knowledge to understand the value of what you're overhearing so you can ask good questions and then go do more research. When you're not talking to someone at the moment, you go look up what they said and see what that connects to so you can ask more questions. But if you don't do the early preparation, you can't do this effectively you're just wasting your time now it may not be that you wasted twelve hundred dollars but you're wasting your time which is more valuable because money you can always get back 
time you can't. Okay, so that is the art, and I should also say the science of professional party crashing when it comes to business conferences, where people get together that share a couple billion to trillion dollars of information. How do you get access to the information that you need? Now, some things that were true before COVID are no longer true today, but you can still look for brochures. Occasionally, it does still happen. But be careful how you're doing it. Again, don't go into any private areas, but sometimes people just leave things behind. What you might do is pick it up and return it, but uh, take a quick picture of it before you do that. <laughs> but take it and return it to the desk. Oh, I was, uh, you'll meet people. Oh, I was just going to turn this in. Well, you, I'm sorry. You look like a conference goer. I just turned in somebody's information at the desk. Let people know that you did that. People, especially if they're honest people, love to know that someone in the public was honest enough and it may be a place to start a conversation but you can always take a picture of the information before you turn it back in if you get a paper brochure which is really very hard to do nowadays <laughs> but if it happens make it work for you but turn it in don't keep it turn it in see what else again when people are the way things are today getting up into a stranger's face risk your life that two years of COVID really has made a mark on how much people are willing to associate. It's easier to stay in, quote, your bubble. And so, again, you're a stranger. They don't know you. They don't know your COVID habits. Now, some people are so happy to not have a mask and so happy to be getting back up into people's faces. You're going to meet very friendly people, but you need to remember it from your perspective. Just like you don't go into private areas, do remember that COVID-19 is still going on a mask. If, if the conference of the people that you're working with is very anti-mask, you wearing a mask is going to be a problem in terms of that shuts them down from you immediately. If you, if the conference that you're with people are happy with masks, then it makes it more likely. So that can go either way. But just know if you get prepared and you get there, you will pick up more of useful information than if you don't get, you don't get there and you don't get prepared. And over the course of a lifetime, if you get really good at looking at events and crashing these conferences and just talking to people, you'll pick up a million dollars worth of information, a trillion dollars worth of information just by doing this consistently. And if all else fails, you've also given yourself a day at a nice hotel. One more thing, imposter syndrome is deadly. I said earlier, I, an American Black woman, a citizen of the United States of America, there is nothing going on in any public area in the United States to which I do not have a right. You have to get very clear in your own mind that you belong everywhere you need to be so long as you violate none of the prevailing laws. If it's public, if it happens in public, you have a right to know about it. You have a right to be there. I don't care if it's a six-star hotel. I don't care who doesn't think you'd be there. Segregation is over. Now, there are still some places in the world, there are still some places in this country where there's still going to be problems for you asserting that. Granted, crashing a business conference in the Marriott Marquis is still a whole different thing in San Francisco than maybe it would be in, well, I want to point out any particular state, but there are, I think, are some regions in the world where it would not be as welcome. Do it anyway. If what you need, because remember, everybody talking about big business in the world, who was it that built the foundational capital of the entire modern world in the last 500 years? I believe it was the sons and the daughters of Africa. So everything everybody's talking about, our ancestors paid for it. You have a right to it. And you have to say this to yourself over and over again and not have him, because if you give off this air that I really don't know what I'm doing and I really don't feel I'm supposed to be here, then you don't. I walked through the Marriott Marquis all day like I own title to the place. And that's the attitude you have to have. Confidence attracts confidence. Confidence attracts ease and other people being willing to be around you because you, you give the impression that you know what you're doing and you know what to do with the information. I am a crypto investor. By the way, if you're interested in investment, if you own a stock, a bond, a piece of a piece of a piece of a Bitcoin, you are an investor. If you own a small business, you're a business person and you belong anywhere 
that your citizenship, legal status of the fact that most people don't know how to check, that you can get to as a member of John or Jane Q Public can go. And this is a mindset thing that you also have to work on. Yeah, Mary Habaki is like a four-star hotel. And yeah, 80 years ago, no, I probably couldn't have gone in there. It's 2022, people. Get out there and act like it. You belong anywhere that the information you need is. Go get it. All right. You have a good day now. Again, the art and really kind of the science of professional party crashing, part three. Have a good day. Thank you for listening.